Welcome back to Access Houston on 97.9 The Box. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth, welcoming a young, vivacious young woman who uh, is here to talk about breast cancer and the Know Your Girls campaign that the Ad Council uh, and the Ad Council Risk Education campaign that they're putting on. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Pearl Burton is in the studio. How are you? I'm doing great. Good, good. morning. Good morning. It's so good to see you. So you have a very um, interesting story here. Uh, worked for Continental Airlines and um, your family had no history of breast cancer and yet you found out that you had, I cannot pronounce this, stage two of ductal carcinoma in situ. Ductal carcinoma in situ. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, what does that even mean? So it's, it's a type of breast cancer. Okay. Yeah. And um, so all breast cancer is not created equal. Mm-hmm. And so there are different types. There are different stages of breast cancer. Mm-hmm. And when you discovered yours, you were at stage two. I was at stage two. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what was that process like? Walk us through that. So I had um, three lumps, mm-hmm. but initially I found one. Mm-hmm. I found the first one. It was the size of a golf ball. Mm-hmm. So the process went very quickly, like Within a week, I was at the doctor's office Mm -hmm. and um, doing a clinical breast exam. A clinical breast exam exam is when the doctor um, examines the the woman's breast. Um, So I did that, and immediately um, my doctor was like, we need to get you in for a mammogram. So then within the week after that, I was at the Rose, and I had uh, a mammogram. Oh, okay. right. Rose. Hey, Chris. Shout right. Out to Chris over there. Yeah. Who's that? Chris Noble? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, and then, um, so I had a screening mammogram, which is very important for a woman to have. Then I had a diagnostic mammogram. So that mm-hmm. diagnostic mammogram is what really um, kind of showed them this is something. So, so we need to go further. Mm-hmm. And so then we had the ultrasound and then we did the biopsy. The biopsy is what yielded the results that it was cancer. Mm. And mm-hmm. now, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm fabulous. Good. Yes. That's good. So, and and so now, are you um, spokesperson, or you're working with the Ad Council for the Know Your Girls campaign? So I work. Or with, how did that come about? Right. So Susan G. Komen yes. um, has partnered with the Ad with Council. With the Ad Council. Okay. Yes. So I am the patient navigator. At Susan G. Komen Houston. Um, and so they called us up and said, hey, can we chat a little bit about Know Your Girls? Mm-hmm. Know Your Girls is a program that we're really, really proud of. Uh, it's geared towards black women, African-American women, ages 30 to 55, um, because black women die. Mm-hmm. From at a higher cancer. rate at than a higher their, uh, rate. white counterparts. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm going to pull my little paperwork out to just give give you some facts here. Please do. And while you yeah. do that, um, you're listening to Access Houston. We're talking to Pearl Burton, who is a representative of Susan G. Komen and working with the Ad Council's Breast Cancer Risk Education Campaign called Know Your Girls. And uh, she was about to shoot us some of these statistics. Yeah. Uh, black women in America are dying of breast cancer at an unacceptable rate. And more than 40 percent uh, more likely to die from breast cancer than our counterpart, our Caucasian women. You said more than 40 percent? Yes. Wow. And that is because um, once we get in, um, the stages are in the latter stages of breast cancer. Um and it's more aggressive, mm-hmm. um, and that's what causes us to die. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so now our younger women are being diagnosed more often as well. That's why the age starts at 30 for Know Your Girls. Mm. And the premise behind Know Your Girls is that, you know. And in girls, you mean so the tatas? We're talking about those girls as well, but we're also talking about our friendships. Okay. 
Yes, our friendships between our girlfriends. So, you know, our girlfriends, we know everything about them, right? Yeah, we know right. things that we're going to take to heaven right. about our girlfriends. Right. And so in fostering those relationships as girlfriends, we need to band together and start talking more about our girls. Like, let's um, make our appointments together. And even if we're not at the age yet where we should start having our mammograms, let's start a conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's just start a conversation. Let's start a conversation with our children, with our families. Like we really need to know our family health history. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, for too long, we've been quiet mm -hmm. and it's it's time out for that. We can't be quiet anymore. We need to know what did Aunt May mm -hmm. pass away of? Right. Let's talk about it. What did Granny die of? Right. So if Granny's sick right now, what is the illness? Mm -hmm. And so we have to foster those relationships or those conversations in the home. Mm -hmm. And we need to start at child, child age just talking about it on their level. Yeah. Yeah. You listen to Access Houston talking to Pearl Burton for the Know Your Girls campaign. Um, so at what age should a young woman begin maybe just self-examinations? Uh, so we recommend um, they can start at age 35. Self-exam can be 20, but we, we encourage, though, that they do that with their doctor. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, go go to the doctor and have the doctors um, do a clinical breast exam. Mm -hmm. Right. If there's activity in the family, uh, mom, grandmother, right. you know, uh, first lines, then um, definitely mention it to your doctor that, you know, my mother was diagnosed right. at this age or my grandmother was diagnosed at this age. Um and then the doctor will know to start, you know. Um, yeah, so you can have a mammogram done, yeah. if necessary, earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, what has been your experience with it? I mean, 10-year breast cancer survivor. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of women who can relate to the uh, ups and downs of, you know, yes. having that, maybe beating it, it coming back. All of that. Tell us about your journey these past 10 years. So there's there's like so many phases of of receiving a breast cancer diagnosis, mm -hmm. any cancer diagnosis, but right. a, a breast cancer diagnosis. There's so many phases. First of all, I say the first phase is just going just to going <laughs> to get the exam. Huh? Exactly. Just going to get the mammogram. I mean, I've literally picked up women i've i've told them i will take you i'll go in there with you if you need me to and i've i've done that for me i wasn't afraid i had actually had a mammogram six months prior to my diagnosis mm. nothing showed and they up didn't catch it nothing showed up and that is why a woman really needs to be in tune with her body yeah um and you know notice changes or, or just be um, cognizant of what's going on with your body. So I had a mammogram six months prior, nothing showed up. And then around the time when I hit Houston, mm -hmm. I, I identified the first lump that I found. So I had two lumps in the right and one in the left mm -hmm. breast. So I ultimately had a double mastectomy with reconstruction done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's the same as our um, the sweet talker, Candy Eastman, on our Sister Station yes. Magic 102. She yes. Had, she had the same procedure done. Yes, yes. So just in case we have some listeners who may not know what that means, I had both my breasts removed mm -hmm. And then I had um, reconstruction done, so I had implants placed. Place. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, but the journey, um, it was a little tough. Uh, some days I could not get out of bed. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, my son at the time was eight mm -hmm. years old. He's mm -hmm. 19 now. Mm -hmm. But at the time he was eight years old, and he really was my, my Energizer bunny. 
Like he really was. He would come into the room and hold the thumbs up. And sometimes I would just make up something for him. Go get me a glass of water. I included him yeah. on my journey. Mm-hmm. I did. Uh, many times we think that children don't understand but if we present it to them on their level they do understand now he did ask me one question Mm -hmm. mommy are you going to die i didn't know if i was going to die at the time Mm -hmm. that he presented the question Mm -hmm. but i said no we are going to fight and then i literally had to fight yeah, I really had to fight. Yeah, especially on the days when it was really challenging for me, I really had to fight. But I took him on the journey with me, um, and and it was good. He's very educated about breast health now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure <laughs> he is. He is. <laughs> You're listening to Access Houston, talking to Pearl Burton from Know Your Girls campaign. For um, those who are interested in in finding more out about the campaign and how it you know, directly affects black women, um, where should they go? They can go to um, Coleman.org. Okay. Um, we have a lot of great information there for them, for the Know Your Girls campaign. We're also on all social media outlets. Uh, so we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we're on Instagram as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the information is there. We really uh, are really trying to push this campaign because... Um, it's so important. It really is important it for is. our younger women um, to be in tune with the, with their bodies and to gather their friends together and just start talking about it. We don't want to come from a place of fear. This is right. about knowledge. Yeah. It, it is about it's about knowledge and just taking care of yourself. Yeah. You know, um, just like I had had my mammogram done. Um, when I found out that I was diagnosed, I was in shock, but I had done the right things, right. you know? Yeah. Uh, so we don't want people to be afraid. We want them to be empowered. Indeed. Yes. So log on to Coleman.org to get more information, or you can log on to uh, knowyourgirls.org and to understand breast cancer, the risk factors, uh, learn how you can spot changes in your own breast, ladies. And it also prepares black women to have the conversation with your doctor and family and and, and whatnot. So that is knowyourgirls.org or Coleman.org. O-R-G. I know that um, the good folks over there at Susan G. Komen, they switch the times um, during the walk because it's normally in the fall, you know, during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And then we have moved it due to Harvey. I think they moved it to like the, um, I don't know if it was like early winter or late winter or early Correct. spring. Correct. Um, so um, when is it? When is the walk? Yes. Again? So the thanks for bringing that up. So it's in October. Okay. So, it's, so we're back. Yeah. Yeah. So we're back Harvey. In October. It's October 5th, okay. yes, this year, and uh, we welcome everyone to, to come out. Registration is already open, it's already open. Okay. so you can register early. Please register early. Um, form a team. Yeah. Form a team. Join a team. If you want to come out and run, come. Bring your kids, your strollers. It really is like a family event. I mean, it's one of my favorite walks of the year here in Houston. Yes. Uh, Susan G. Komen. Yes. Um, also, uh, the March of Dimes. That's another one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, but the fun that we have at the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure walk is yeah. <laughs> it's immense. It's so much fun. All of that pink everywhere. People in that pink tutu. <laughs> exactly. Just walking around, you know, yes. talking, loving each other, yes. getting the information out there, you know, dancing yes. the music. It it's really a festival. Like it is. You don't even realize that, you know, you're walking this. Yeah, um, it's a blast. You know, these three miles. So, um, so register now. Registration is open. And then yes. we're, we're back in October. So you all will come back when it comes time closer for the walk. Absolutely. Yes? Absolutely. Good. Whenever you want us to, we're, we're here. Well, indeed. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Log on to Komen.org or knowyourgirls.org and get all of the information Pearl Burton, Programs and Partnership Coordinator for Susan G. Komen Houston. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Uh, welcoming back. It's been a while. I don't know, maybe about a, 
a year or so since since she's been on the program. Please excuse my uh, mouth and tongue not working together well this morning. Uh, she is uh, the founder of the Chapman Woman's Foundation. Please welcome Shantara Chapman back to the program. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for being here. How have things been since the last time we spoke? Oh, things have been great. Things have been great. We've been since we last spoke. We've been able to, you know, help women in the city more. I think I talked to you right before our 10 year anniversary. Yes. So we've been doing this for 10 years and we're back at it again. We're doing more. Well, you know, people keep moving here. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, yesterday when I was on 610 and looking at the traffic coming the other way and uh, me and Keisha Nicole, uh, we were riding together and she was like, look at this traffic. It's ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, that's how I know. More and more people are steadily moving They're here. They're coming here. Like, I, think we I should keep stop. meeting people that are moving here from L.A., from Chicago, mm-hmm. from Milwaukee, from Atlanta. Like, Houston is it now. And so, having said all of that, people may not know what it is that the Chapman Women's Foundation does. So, please explain your purpose and mission of the foundation. Sure. Uh, the Chapman Women's Foundation, we exist to help ladies to grow and indulge in what we call power her. Yes, And that means that we help them to do what they want to do when they want to. And whatever she would like to do, we help to empower her to do so. And how we do that is we give scholarships and grants to women who are trying to finish school or go back to school to do better for themselves and their families. We try to help with seed money for ladies who are trying to build businesses. And we also help to ladies who are trying to get out of shelter. So those ladies who are in transition we're trying to help them to take that step forward out of a shelter into a new life for their families. Indeed. That is, we host uh, events to raise money to give to out give scholarships. Yeah, yes. And, and, and you've got a, a good one that is coming up on uh, the 27th. That's uh, Saturday, July 27th, um, a shopping event. Yes. So um, so how is this going to work? So um, we're partnering with Joie in the River Oaks District. Okay. Um, and they are going to allow from 7 to 9 p.m. on Saturday, July 27th, anyone that comes in and shops a portion of their bill, whatever they pay for their clothes, a portion, 20% will go to the Chapman Women's Foundation. Wow. Nice. So we are, you know, trying to get as many people out to shop during those two hours at Draw because the more people shop, the more funds will be donated to the, the Chapman Women's Foundation. Ah, and so and you're having it at Joie. Is that, yes. is that French? Yes, it is. It is. Oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> but they have, have, I do not, not no. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, um, Est-ce que vous comprenez uh, la français? Sure, whatever you just said there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got to show off a little bit because I'm learning French and See, Spanish at the same good. time. That so. sounds good. That sounds good. But yeah, so they, they, you know, they have clothes, they have shoes, they have candles and little trinkets. So it's one of those places where you can find things to, you know, if you wanted to just come out and just see what's there. They have a few things that are not just clothing. So yeah. not just for the ladies too. Men can come and buy oh, gifts. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. right. Ooh, well, you know. And if you like candles, there are some guys that like candles. Oh, no, yeah. I I like a nice candle. Mm -hmm. I I try to keep a nice candle um, every season. Um, You're listening to Access Houston, talking to uh, Shantara Chapman from the Chapman Women's Foundation. Um, They're having their event on their shopping event on a Saturday, July 27th. Um, I want to talk about these ladies in the shelter because I'm sure that, you know, they come from all walks of life, be mm-hmm. it domestic violence, be it sexual abuse, or being, you know, sex workers who mm-hmm. um, were abused. Um, what is the pulse in the in the mental space of these ladies when they are coming out? When they're coming out, because I partner with shelters that have the full gamut of counseling and, you know, helping them to find jobs, they're coming out just really hopeful. Good. They're hopeful. They, they know that there's going to be a lot of hard work. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they have children. So they are stepping out with their kids and with their families, wondering if the job that they have is enough. Mm-hmm. You know, because some ladies have been in shelters five years, 10 years, and they haven't worked 
in a long time. They've just bounced from shelter to shelter, depending on what their situation has been over that time. So when we get these ladies, one, they've already kind of been working on themselves Mm -hmm. and they have these jobs and they are just like, we just need a little extra help. We just need that extra support. Some ladies just a deposit on the apartment. We, We know we'll be able to cover the rest of it, but I don't have the upfront money to get in the apartment or the upfront money to get the car. So me and my baby are not walking to the bus stop every day. Yeah. And there are some ladies that have the apartment and have the car and have no furniture. Mm-hmm. They're sleeping on floors. So we just try to meet them where they are mm-hmm. and help them. Mm-hmm. That's OK, though. You know, there's a, you know, trust the process, ladies, you know, uh, tr- trust the process. How does it make you feel? Well, you've been doing this for 10 plus years now. And so I'm sure the um, fulfillment that you get uh, in your heart. I know you know. Well, I know that there's a there's a place in heaven for you, but um, <laughs> I hope so. You know the gift of giving, and it's always better to give to receive. So, what is that like for you? Um, I always, you know, we hear that always better to give to re- than receive, and um, too much is given, much is required. Absolutely. And so, I I think that the one thing I've always been given is love and support from my family. I may we may not have all of the dollars. We never may not have had everything you know, financially taken care of or materially, but I've always had that support. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I feel like I can always give. So when my phone's ringing in the middle of the night from someone who may need a shelter to go to, Mm -hmm. I feel like the least I can do is give them the time, research where they are, find them a local shelter and make the phone calls for them and pick up that phone. So I feel like it's, to me, it's what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's just answering the phone. I answer the phone for everybody else. Yeah. That's just (laughs) something that simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, Shantara Chapman of the Chapman Women's Foundation is here and the Empower Herring U Tour. Um, (laughs) It's made its stops here in Atlanta College Station and Orlando. Wow. So, you you know, this is a. Yeah. You're not playing. I'm trying to get the word out. I'm trying to do more. I mean, I'm from Houston and I love it here. Been doing it just in Houston for 10 years. Why not? But it's time to let some other ladies in. I see that you have. Houston's fraternal twin uh, city in there too, Atlanta. I always say that Houston and Atlanta <laughs> are fraternal twins. I, know. I yeah. promise you the vibes are the same. I lived in both. It is. I it was mean, great. It was yeah. great. We did that last month. It was really great to be in Atlanta and to be a part of just, you know, growing the message in a different place. And it was well received. Yeah. Um, same kind of well i mean the human the human condition it is all the same everybody has you know um the same story there uh how, how was it being in another city was this your first um go round with you know all of these different yes markets? this is my first time at the first this was my second book empower her and you is my second book the first one i just all social media and just here in Houston. Mm-hmm. I didn't do anything. So this is my first time branching out to different markets and talking to ladies outside of the city. Well, let's talk about your second book. Let's yeah. talk about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, empowering. Empower her. Empower her. Empower. Oh, Jesus. Say that five times. <laughs> empower her. You tour. And it's a uh, it's a 12 step book to help women find their voices. Yes. yes. Mm. Um. What are what's one important step that you can share on the program that women should find their voice? Um, One important tip is understanding your boundaries and setting them. You know, I I, I tend to talk a lot about boundaries being kind of like your house, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, there are some some things some things you don't want in your home. Right. There are some people you don't want in your home. Right. There are some places that you don't want people to go in your home. Right. Yeah. I. Exactly. Any leaks in her closet. Right. Right. I mean, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> right. And so, setting your boundaries, even with your friends and with your family, is important because that helps you to um, really define who you are. It's the, you're setting that, you're creating that definition of who you are, what you will and will not accept, and mm-hmm. being okay with saying no to those people once they try to cross those lines. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I feel like that's a huge step in understanding, redefining or owning your voice. It's owning who you are Mm. and what you will and will not accept. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, So the book just came out uh, this year Mm -hmm. in February. And what was it like writing this book? 
This one, honestly, was so much easier than the first one. I'm sure. Because it was, what, what is it that I want to say? And I was just answering a question. I always get the question, what do I feel is the most important aspect of women's empowerment? Mm-hmm. And to me, it's your voice. That's the one thing that leaves in the midst of chaos. That's the one thing that and if you're in an abusive situation, you no longer are talking to that person or you're not telling your friends and family you draw into yourself. If you're at work and you can't stand your boss, you're not talking no more. I'm just sitting mm-hmm. at my desk and mm-hmm. just mind my business. Silence that, is golden. Yes. But at the same time, you're losing you if you let it go over time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Over yes, time, yes, yes. you're less and less open and you know receiving and giving and so that's that's really what i was trying to get from this book is for people to understand one it's simple Mm -hmm. but it's but it's complicated yeah who are some of your inspirations growing up like you know the way that you are who who did you see or who was it that you know put that spark in you to make you be where you are right now and to help women the way that you do um honestly um you know growing up with a single mother and so I just watched. I'm a very, I'm an observer. And so my mom and my aunts in a, in a family of, you know, seven, they had seven siblings. So I'm watching all of them and I'm watching most of the men kind of do their thing. But I'm watching the women struggle mm-hmm. and I'm watching the women just do it all mm-hmm. and not complaining or anything. Just, man, Get they are work, they're getting it done. And so my mom would always just tell us, you can do whatever you want. It's you know, we're not confined by this neighborhood. We're not confined by, you know, anything. If you want to go out and do something. I'm not holding you back just because I didn't know about it doesn't mean that you can't know about it. And so that kind of just stuck with me. And I would always just watch how she handled every situation, anything, whether it was we don't have really have enough to pay the bills, but we're going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Or let me go in here and tell them that I'm not going to leave my kids at home alone another, you know, mm-hmm. another weekend. Listen, so I just paid attention. That's what's up. And that's why I'm not mad at, you know, having a woman president because y'all get it done <laughs> we just do you it always have y'all you you just get it done f it i'll do it myself every black woman ever <laughs> yep we're just gonna go and so that's what i watched and it was okay you know i'm gonna be able to give the same type of support it wasn't like my mom was giving motivational speeches every night right. it was just you know a little bit of things here like go do that don't let nobody tell you no mm-hmm. why you know, even when I decided to go to Texas A&M, I had family members like, don't do that. <laughs> it's not going to work out. Mm-hmm. You Or you're going to be back after the first semester. And my mom was like, why did you say that? No, she's going to go and do it and she's going to do well. I know that's right. And I was like, I'm out of here. Bye. I'll be back. Y'all will see. You'll Mama see. Mama raised a real one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shantara Chapman from the Women's uh, from the Chapman Women's Foundation. Uh, the uh, shopping event is happening on Saturday July 27th at a, how do you pronounce the place again? Joie. 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 I didn't have it in front of me. At Joie, 7 p.m. on a Saturday. Come through. It will benefit uh, these ladies who are transitioning out, you know, um, doing amazing things and, and now have expanded on to three other markets. That's just, that's amazing, Shantara. Thank you. So, Thank you. Uh, nothing but, you know, love and, 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 and all of the good stuff your way. You have an open invitation to the program uh, whenever. So, uh, so of course, you know, come back to uh, talk about uh, your, the breakfast, the power play breakfast that is going to be happening. Uh, happening. So, uh, hopefully, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that'd be to great. Talk about that. Oh yeah, all I'd right. love to. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Shantara Chapman of the Chapman Women's Foundation. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for listening to Access Houston. Listen to Access Houston. Into Access Houston. Into Access Houston.